I'm Andy and welcome to my channel about crypto. In today's video, I want to give a quick update on the current market situation, something I actually haven't done in a while. Because, well, let's be honest, the markets haven't been that exciting recently. But the last few weeks, I think there were some developments which are worth mentioning. And it's worth discussing what will likely happen over the next few weeks. As always, if you like those videos, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. And also, please do check out my private Discord. And if you'd like to learn more about crypto and NFTs, please do check out my course, Crypto Like a Pro. You can find the link in the description. As always, when we talk about price action, we look at the chart of Bitcoin first. And the important thing to notice here is that we are quite clearly in a bit of an uptrend here. Especially if we look at the price action from this area here, we are quite clearly recording higher lows and also higher highs, which basically is the definition of an uptrend. Also, it's worth noting that we are now above the Bitcoin's bear market support band, so 200 week SMA. We went above it around here, stayed for a little bit, crashed below, managed to get above it again. And I would say that we managed to successfully hold it as support on those few occasions here. And so far we're staying above it. Whether we will stay above it or not remains to be seen, but there is a reasonable chance that even if we may not necessarily go up straight away, we may hold this trend line, so approximately, what, $23,000 as support. On the other hand though, we are still way below the bull market support band, so 20 week SMA, that's still trending around, well, almost $30,000, so we still have a good $6,000 to go. And also, those last few higher highs were not really that exciting, right? I mean, the one here was, that was what, approximately $24,000. And it took us like four or five attempts to get to around $25,000. So we are barely recording any higher highs. And basically this pattern here would suggest that, well, essentially we have two converging lines. However, you want to draw those lines. I would be tempted to do something like this more or less. And then another one. something like this, you could draw them slightly differently, that doesn't particularly matter how they go, but we quite clearly have this ascending wedge. And of course, we can see that quite soon within the next couple of weeks or so, these lines will pretty much meet, and the price then either has to go up or down from that point. I know it's not a great discovery that price will go up or down, but I would argue that there's pretty strong possibility that the price may break down. Not in the least because a lot of people are expecting it to happen and it's likely to be sort of self-fulfilling prophecy. Also, if we look at the chart, we've seen something similar here. We were sort of trending up more sideways, but still there was a little bit of an uptrend and then we had this breakdown. Personally, I expect that we may trend up to about 26, 28K, so sort of upper range of that wedge I just uh, drawn a moment ago, and then we may have a bit of a correction. How much of a correction is hard to tell, whether we will crash to the bear market support band, so around 23k, hold it and then go up, or whether we'll break below it. And a lot of people will, a lot of people expect that we may actually revisit those levels of around 17k or 17.5k. Another possibility is that, of course, we, we go up. And actually 17 and a half K a couple of months ago was the market bottom. And from now on, we will be trending upwards, probably quite slowly for a while, but upwards nonetheless. Bottom line is it's pretty much impossible to predict it at the moment. And I would say that the best strategy is probably holding some cash on the sidelines, but also DCAing into Bitcoin and gradually increasing your position. Because, well, if we zoom out, we are still solid two thirds down from the market top, right? Or from, old, from the all time high. It's quite fair to assume that Bitcoin will likely hit 100K or more in the next bull market run. Of course, it won't happen straight away, but eventually we will likely get there. 
And if that's the case, then, well, that's an easy 4x, easy quote unquote, um, from the current price. So it's even if we crash to 17 or to 20k or whatever, well, this is not exactly a bad entry point. So I would say to play it safe, have some cash ready on the sidelines, don't go all in, but DCAing into Bitcoin is certainly not a bad idea at this point. What's probably more interesting is what ETH has been doing recently, because ETH's price action has been vastly outperforming Bitcoin over the last few weeks. And essentially this massive move up is all to do with the upcoming merge. So the merge is something that used to be called ETH 2.0 in the past. And basically that's ETH moving from, from the proof of work to the proof of stake. So essentially Ethereum mainnet. So the live part of the Ethereum network rather than the testnet, the part of the network which conducts all the transactions or where all the transactions are being conducted on will merge with the Bitcoin chain proof of stake system. So basically ETH will be 100% proof of stake from that point onwards. The most important thing here is that the merge will reduce Ethereum's energy consumption by 99.95% approximately. So the huge potential contra-argument for implementing crypto, which is, well, it's not very environmentally friendly, will be, that issue will be largely gone because it will be far, far, far more, far cleaner. It will require far less energy. One of the common misconceptions is that also it will be much cheaper, as in gas fees will go down drastically. That's not entirely true. I mean, the merge itself will not cause it. For the gas fees to go down, we'll need something called sharding. So essentially that's the next step when there will be increased scalability of, of Ethereum blockchain. But that will come in the future. However, the merge is an integral part of this process. But what's important here is that essentially the crypto community is speculating on ETH price based on, on the date of this merge. And it's supposed to happen in September. The date 19th of September is mentioned somewhere here, and that's, well, ethereum.org page, so that should be reliable. Um, can't find it right now, but it's definitely here somewhere. There you go, 19th of September, 2022. On some other websites, I've seen potentially 15th or 16th of September, but basically we're looking at mid-September, potentially second half of September, so relatively soon. And basically this price action here, this massive spike, is speculation based on that event. Most likely what we will see happen is price skyrocketing and then dumping shortly before that. So something similar to what happened with Cardano when Cardano mainnet was launched. And that was this massive spike here in September last year. So we had this massive move up. By the way, I don't expect ETH to go up this much in price to, well, to its all-time high of over $3. And then crashed straight away after that. I mean, actually, I'm pretty sure that the mainnet was somewhere here. I think it was 12th of September. So the all-time high was actually a few days, probably about a week or week and a half before that date. Then, of course, a lot of that downwards movement was to do with the current market situation and so on. But nonetheless, there was a significant pullback to, well, something like just above $2. If we say that that pullback was somewhere to this level, that's what $2.20 or something like that. So this is a classic example of buy the rumor, sell the news price action. And I think similar thing will happen with ETH. We will see that continued move up and then sell off. How high ETH will go and when it will crash? I would guess that it will crash somewhere in early September, very early September, maybe first week or so. How high it will go? Well, there are a few options. I mean, at the moment, it was actually rejected from its bull market support band, the 20-week uh, SMA, quite clearly rejected. I think it has a chance to break above it because otherwise, well, around $2,000 seems to be the current peak for ETH. Even if it breaks above it, there's this very significant long-term trend line here, which is more or less something like this, give or take. 
So if ETH was to respect this trend line, well, that would mean that it will only go up to about 2200 or so. Well, that's not only exactly because it was not that long ago around $1,000. So that's a solid more than 2x. But I would definitely look at this level, at this trend line, as a potential peak of how well ETH may do before the, the merge. Of course, I may be completely wrong. There may be much more speculation and it may go higher. In such event, I would expect that the next resistance level will be somewhere around 25, 2600, basically when we had those support levels here, resistance here, bit of a support here, resistance here, and so on, on multiple occasions around this period of time. This 25, 2600 uh, level is, is quite significant for ETH. So that would be the next target in my opinion. But in any case, I don't think this price action is very natural. I think it's driven largely by speculation because of that merge. I mean, I pretty much know this for a fact. I mean, there's no other reason for this price action. And of course, if there are any issues with the merge, if it's delayed or if there are any problems with this rollout, that will also impact price of ETH quite negatively in the, in the short term. Of course, in the long term, I'm extremely bullish on ETH. There's no question about that. But in the short term, it's worth acknowledging that this is essentially what's driving this price action and it's not going to go forever. Just to finalize it, if you're not familiar with what will happen after the merge or what, what does it mean for your ETH holdings, well, Ethereum will remain Ethereum. There is no such thing as Ethereum 2.0 and there will be no airdrop. There, uh, there will be no new token or anything like that. So you have to be also careful in case if there are any scams or anything like that happening closer to the date because I'm pretty sure some people will try to take advantage of this situation. So just bear in mind that ETH remains ETH. From you as an end user, nothing really changes. It's exactly the same ETH in your wallet, the transactions are conducted exactly the same. There is, there is no difference, you don't have to change your tokens, you, nothing really changes. It's just in the background, transactions are going to be verified in a different way, basically using proof of stake rather than proof of work system. But that's really the only thing and on the surface from, from the user's perspective, nothing really changes. So. Yeah, I think that's it for today. Just just a brief recap of what's happening with Bitcoin and ETH. Uh, I think we're remaining in very choppy waters over, overall. Any bullish price action at the moment, I'm not particularly convinced by it because on a macro scale, nothing really has changed. There's still war in Ukraine. Situation worldwide is still pretty crap. Yes. The inflation in the US may be peaked last month, but that remains to be seen because just one month of lower inflation is not exactly a guarantee that, that we had the peak and, and that's it. And also we have to remember that in many other countries, situation is still quite rough and we may be still quite far from the peak. I think, for example, in the UK, it's likely that the inflation will peak towards the end of this year or even early next year. So, yeah, I think on a macro scale situation is going to remain quite choppy, at least for the coming weeks and at least I would say two, three months. Uh, what will happen after that, of course, remains to be seen, but I would be definitely very, very careful in getting too excited based on any short term price action. I think long term, of course, tokens like or coins like ETH or Bitcoin remain really, really good value at current prices. I firmly believe that Bitcoin will go above 100 grand. I think ETH, it's perfectly reasonable to expect that it will hit 10 grand or more in the next bull run, but, but that it may take quite a while. And certainly at the moment, I'm not really looking at investing into any altcoins because if we do have a pullback, they will get absolutely smashed. And if we don't get a pullback, then, well, if you're already in Bitcoin or ETH, then your money is, is going up in value. And then, of course, you can roll those profits into, into altcoins at a later date, and you can still take advantage of profits there. So, yeah, we'll see how it goes. But that's, in short, what I, what I think is likely to, 
play out over the next weeks and months. Uh, so in short, stay safe. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you next time. Thank you for watching. Bye.